Hello, hello, my squidlings. It's Katie here, and today we're going to be doing another sketchbook ideas video. I hope you're excited. I'm really excited for some of the ideas that I have. So I have my sketchbook here. If you're curious, I have it linked in the description below, but this is a Mossery Cellulose Watercolor Paper Sketchbook. And I don't know if you remember a while back, but I made a spring theme palette, so we're going to be using that as well. And... I may use a pencil, I've got some water and a brush to the side, and if you're painting along with me, that is all you'll need. Let's zoom in to this page and start painting. The first idea is a watering can filled with flowers, and I'm just going to be mixing up kind of a peachy red color here. I want a little bit more red than this going to water it down and I'm not adding any line art to this at the moment. I may add it later, but for now we're just going to go in. So um, I'm going to be painting the watering can first. And if you don't know what a watering can looks like, uh, actually there are all sorts of watering cans, um, but you can always look one up on the Google. I'm not being too like particular about what this looks like. I'm just kind of throwing some paint and then I may add a little bit of red to the side here just to darken it up. And then the flowers I'm going to be putting in it are just going to be little, I don't even know what to call them, they're just these little like five petaled flowers. And I'm just going to basically make some little stars. And they don't all have to look the same. They can definitely look different. You can just kind of dab some in there if you want to make it a little different. And I want these to be kind of overflowing, so I'm just going to be adding a lot of these little petals around here. Lots of super bright colors in this watering pot. Uh, I imagine maybe somebody cut the top off of a watering can um, and just kind of threw some seeds in there maybe. Maybe we'll have some kind of hanging out back here. Uh, I'm going to mix a little bit of brown. This is like a burnt sienna color. Just to kind of throw in here a little bit just to add a little bit of depth. I'm going to mix it with some yellow because I find that to be a little too dark. And then, yeah, I'm just going to kind of dab some of it in here. And then I may just go in with some plain water and help it move around because I don't want it to just stick in one spot. I'm going to add some just kind of like little rustic lines to this watering can as well. And then I may go in here. Actually, I'm going to go in here and just add a little bit to the background to make it seem like it's a rounded shape. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some Viridian, mix it with a little bit of yellow to help deepen that green color, and then I'm just going to add some lines for the little stems. And then I'll add some little leaves in here as well. And you can change this up as you see fit, honestly. Um, I'm going to add some deeper flowers in the back here and just kind of in between these other flowers. I may add maybe a little bit of red to that brown just to change it up a bit. And I'm more going for the essence of the flower and not the actual flower itself, if that makes any sense. My yellow's got a little bit of green in it. But yeah, I'm not going for like the perfect flower shape because I don't really care. <laughs> I just want to play around with some color and drop some petals in here and there and just go for the essence of it. I'm going to add some petals around these leaves that I made. I 
And then I think I'm just gonna add a little bit of a drop shadow here. So I'm gonna mix a little bit of the red with the green just to neutralize it and make kind of like a plain brown color. Just add it right under here and then feather it out. And then if you want, you can add more shading or whatever. That is solely up to you. I'm just gonna add a touch of shading to the side here. And then there's that. You can use whatever flower you want as far as the design. Yeah, I like this one. So that is the flowers in a little watering pail. The next one I'm going to do, I'm actually going to be painting a little bit of a landscape. So I'm gonna be using the whole bottom part of this. And I'm just using, I am not even sure what blue this is. I think it is Cirrus Blue, Cineus Blue by Sennelier. And I am just kind of adding that in there. Since it's a landscape, I just want to do like a little, kind of an organic shape, but it's, it's definitely looking like a square rectangle. And I'm going to drop in some water because I want this to be really, really light. And I might even, actually I'm going to, I'm going to blot some of this up. Actually, that paper towel gives it a nice little texture. And then for even more texture, because I want a little cloud in there, I'm gonna go in with this paper towel and I'm just gonna blot it up a little bit more. Maybe I'll add some water to help it. And then to kind of pull it out from the background, I'll add a little bit of a drop shadow here, just kind of like right underneath, just to gray it up a little bit and to make it stand out from that background. <laughs> the point of this is not just a cloud, I promise. Um, I'm going to make a kind of a mix between the Viridian and the Burnt Sienna, but I want it to be a dark mix because we're gonna be plopping a tree in here in a second. Add a little red, I added way too much red, but actually it turned out to be fine. So we're just gonna add the branches of a tree And I just want it to go right up in there. Do as many or as few branches as you'd like. Some of this is still wet, so I'm gonna get a little feathering, that's okay. I don't mind. Just kind of do what looks right to you. So if you think there should be a branch wherever you think there should be a branch, then put it. And then I'm gonna take some more of that red and I'm just going to kind of drop it in kind of like this just like tap it in because these are going to be the little buds of our tree and i'm going to lighten it as i go so some of these buds will be really light some of them will be really dark and then some of them may barely be there at all And if you had any of that bleeding from before, you can just plop in some little buds right over it. It'll just cover them up so you don't even have to worry about it. This is honestly a really simple way just to do a little landscape. It doesn't require much know-how. If you want to use a reference, feel free. But I'm not using reference, and I just 
I'm just having fun with it. We've got ourselves a little budding tree. Maybe we want to add a little friend in the background. So we'll add like a little, we'll get a dark mix here. And then maybe we'll add just like a little, here, let me dab it off on my paper towel. Just like a little bird friend in the background. Maybe we'll add a few. And there you go, you got yourself a little sand landscape. Sandscape. If you want, you can darken up this drop shadow a little bit. I don't know why I keep calling it a drop shadow. It's not a drop shadow. It's just a regular shadow. And if you don't like it, just dab it out. It's good enough, right? <laughs> there we go. All right, so there is idea number two, and that is a landscape. For this next idea, I'm actually gonna be using a whole page here, and I'm gonna be using it on this side. And we are gonna draw some rainbows. How fun is that? And I'm gonna use a bunch of different colors in a bunch of different ways. And we're just going to have fun with it. Pick up some of this yellow, maybe make a little orange. No need to be super crazy and uh, precise if you don't wanna be. Maybe we'll do a red one. You don't have to start with red. Use whatever colors you want. Uh, maybe we'll do a blue one next. And we'll just let the colors just do what they're gonna do. Maybe we'll use a little bit of this cobalt teal. May drip in a little bit more of that blue because that red got really powerful really fast. Um, let's do a blue one. Then maybe some viridian. And then how about some red to end it? These are a really fun exercise. If you just want to play with your paints. And you can make them bigger if you want to add more than three colors. I kind of like having the three colors. Um, and maybe I'll make a purple for this next one. Well, it ended up not being purple. It's some weird blue. Yeah, and if you want, you can like drip in some water, move it around, have some fun. Those are really fun. You don't have to be as messy as I was. I just find it really fun to be messy. There's a full page of rainbows. You can do them in whatever colors you want. I really love these colors. And uh, this one's my favorite probably because it has that or gorgeous orange. But yeah, that one was really fun. All right, on to the next one. And for these, I just kind of want to paint some cute little rain boots. And I really want them to be blue. <laughs> so we're just going to paint in some little boots. Again, I'm just kind of winging this. Um, I kind of want them to be forward facing. These are probably going to be a little bit more cartoony because I'm not using a reference and I'm also not trying to be realistic. And so I'm just kind of like painting the outline here. I'll add shading a little bit later. But for now, I'm just kind of painting those. And I do want to put flowers in these, just like the, um, the water bucket earlier. But I want these to be tulips. So we're just going to make some little U-shapes. And then just kind of go down the middle. You can, of course, vary the colors. I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow to my next batch. I may drop in some here. These are gonna be a little oranger. Maybe I'll drip in some water to one of them. Add a little bit of yellow. Maybe this one will be a little yellowier. Drip in some orange. And then we'll grab a little bit of Viridian. 
and then we'll just take those stems and just connect them to the inside of these little boots. Maybe we'll add some little leaves. <laughs> Those are really cute. Uh, Alright, I'm going to take a little bit of this blue and try to muddy it up a little bit, make some muddy colors just so I can darken that up. Oh wow, look how that bled. Alright, I did not want you to bleed like that. And yeah, I'm just making some really simple shadows and highlights really. Um, I'm gonna tap in a little bit of darkness back here in the back. And then honestly, I'm just gonna leave them like that. Maybe we'll add a little bit of a shadow down here. And then ta-da, <laughs> there are your little rain boots. If you wanna add a little blue into that shadow, feel free, I'm going to. I really love how these turned out. All right, the next thing, I'm gonna do this as a bit of a guilty pleasure because you know me, I'm going to paint a vampire squid. Um, <laughs> I Of course I have to add some squids into this, right? But we're gonna turn this cutie into a little umbrella. I actually have cute squid umbrella stickers over on my store if you're interested and checking them out, but yeah, we're making a squid umbrella because vampire squids look like little umbrellas. And so I figured why not. So I'm just making the shape of a vampire squid, which again kind of looks like an umbrella. And then I'm just going to take some burnt sienna and I'm going to mix it with a little green because I want to cool it down. Um, and then I'm just going to make like a handle and then for its little eyes, I'm just going to kind of drop in. Oh, that's terrifying. Let's not do that. <laughs> Let's wait for this to dry just a bit before we go crazy. While we're waiting, I'm going to add some, they have little spikes at the end. So we're just going to kind of drip it in there. And then they also have this. I don't know what they're called actually, but it's like this yellowiness right here in the center of their fins. They're, they're not really tentacles. <laughs> they're kind of like fins. And then while we're waiting for that to dry, I'm just going to add some cute little raindrops. I'm going to take some more of this red, just kind of darken up these edges here and let them kind of bleed into the wet paint. And if it's not wet, just kind of help it along. And actually, I'm going to use this like dark mix for the eyes because they are, I don't think they're blind, but they do live in the dark depths of the ocean. Okay, again, that's not fully dry. <laughs> Why am I so impatient? All right, I need to let this dry. I'll be back. I'm going to take this darker brown now that it's dry and I'm just going to paint in some little eyes for our little friend. And then I might add just like a little smile. Yeah, we'll just add a little smile. <laughs> this eye, what in the world? It got so big. There we go. <laughs> He just got some big eyes. Anyway, <laughs> super cute. I love painting um, vampire squids. They're just so fun. I'm gonna warm up the inside here with just a tad bit of yellow and then we're gonna call that one done. Another one we're gonna do is gonna be a fun one. Um, so I'm gonna lay down like a really light layer of green um, and I'm just gonna paint it in a little rectangle here. And you can certainly do this as like a full page pattern. I'm, I just don't want to do a full page pattern, so I'm not going to. All right, now before we can go on, I've got to let this dry. All right, back to this little clover area here, because that's what we're painting. I don't know if I told you. 
so I'm now going to darken up the mix a bit. And we're just going to start painting in some cute little clovers. Maybe we'll do some three leaf ones. Maybe we'll do some four leaf ones. But make sure to round off the petals or the leaves or whatever. Um, to make sure you're getting that clover look. And you're just going to do this as much as you want. You can fill a page, you can just do a little section like I'm doing. And honestly, you're kind of just making like a field of clovers here if you do what I'm doing. So you don't have to make them all perfect, just make a few recognizable, I guess because you're gonna wanna make the background darker as you go. So then after you let that one dry, you're gonna do a darker layer in the back. And then when you find yourself messing up because you did the layers wrong, just go ahead and dab in a bunch of colors and a bunch of water, and then we'll fix it with pen because guess what? Mistakes are totally normal and you shouldn't feel bad about them. I'm gonna add a little yellow in here. Take a paper towel and blot some of this out. Then we'll drip in some really dark color along with a little more yellow. And then we'll let it dry and actually fix it with some pen. Alright, so since I'm taking a pen to this, I'm just going to draw in some little clovers. You can do this however you want. You know me, I'm going to do this kind of messily. This is not even completely dry, but that's fine. I'm going to add like some little sketchy marks here and there. I may throw in a four leaf clover. These are really easy to draw too. Of course, they're not probably super accurate, but that's okay. Just kind of throw them in in all sizes. And I'm not going to go super crazy. Um, I'll probably add a few more and then just call it quits because I'm sure you get the gist of it. I do want to add in a four leaf clover. But yeah, you get the gist, but we got ourselves a cute little clover patch. It's not what I envisioned. <laughs> I thought I was going to do it all in watercolor, but here we are. Another thing you can do, um, again, I'm not going to do this as a full page, but you can do like raindrop patterns. Just really simple ones. I'm just gonna drop water in here in the center and just let it flow. Uh, and you can do them any sort of way you want. So you wanna do just like a solid one or you can do one with an outline with like a little pattern on the inside. You can kind of do it maybe like the rainbows we did earlier. So just like do different colors, maybe let them bleed into each other. You could do a light layer, let this flow. And then when you let it dry, you can go in with pen or something. You could also do it similar to the second one we did. And then add some water in the sections. Kind of give it that bleedy look. Just, you know, play around. But yeah, you can do it however you want. I'll do one with like a little swirl in the center. Oh, that one's really cool. Also, another way to do them is just kind of like pushing down on your paintbrush. So, yeah. Load up your brush and then just press down and lift. And if it looks wonky, you can just adjust it from there. Yeah, raindrops are also a really fun way to just kind of play around in your sketchbook. All right, so we're on to the last little bit here and I'm struggling because I'm trying to film and I feel like everybody is calling me today. Anyway, the next one we're gonna be painting are butterflies and you may be like, Katie, didn't you just like finish some moths or something weird like that? And yeah, yeah, I did. And I want to paint some butterflies. So we're just going to paint some butterflies. 
And I'm just going to go in and go for it. We're just going to paint some wings. We're going to wing it. Hey, I'm sorry, that was so bad. Anyway, <laughs> I am winging it though. And we're just going to... Yeah, we're just going to paint this, and if I, you want to detail it later, you can. I will probably detail mine a little bit later. Maybe we'll do some straight winged ones. We'll do some cute little ones. I tell you what, this blue gets really powerful really fast if you're not careful. I'm gonna pull up some of that water and I guess in turn make this butterfly a little bigger. Kind of on accident. We got some primary butterflies over here. That wasn't really intentional, it's kind of funny. Maybe we'll add a cute one right here. But yeah, you can do whatever color, whatever shape. References, as I always say, are your friend, not your enemy. So use them as you see fit. Maybe I'll just do a little side view for that one. And then we'll just kind of pull out some color for the back. Actually, that looks really strange. All right, we're gonna turn that into something else. There we go. That's not so bad. Okay, so we have a bunch of butterflies. You can detail them with a pen if you want. I'm just gonna leave them like this because they're kind of cute like this. Next up, you can draw some birds. I really want to paint a yellow bird. My yellow is kind of dirty, so please don't mind me. Maybe this one will be like a little chicken. Give it some little tail feathers and a little beak. And you can add some shading to the bottom and wherever if you want. Give it some cute little feet. And I'm not looking on a reference for this and I probably should but that's okay. Um, there are blue jays. I don't exactly know how much of them is blue. I know it's not all of them. So we're only going to do the tummy. I think the back of it is like a dark color. I'm not really sure so we'll just kind of wing it oh sorry the pun it's just too easy maybe we'll just add some cute little feet but birds are always really like kind of common this time of year at least where i live they're all kind of flying home and they're super loud and kind of annoying but also just super happy and of course there are birds of all shapes and sizes. I kind of want to fit in just like a little round chick right here. Just gonna fill it in. Maybe we'll do some little wings. I'll shade it a bit. Oh, I guess I'm shading it more than a bit. And then when it dries, I'll add a little bit more to it. But for now, let's move on to the last one. For the last one, I kind of want to touch on something I did a little bit earlier. And I want to draw some rain boots. Or maybe I'll just draw some regular boots. I say draw, I mean paint. And I want these ones to be kind of in a puddle or something, maybe. I'm just kind of sketching here with my paintbrush and then I'll fill it in with just water and then the paint can kind of just do what it wants to do. And I'll darken them up in a bit, but I want them to be in like a little rain puddle. And I know rain puddles are not this color. 
And you will add a little darkness to it because these boots would be reflecting. Let's add maybe some dirt. Maybe this is in a, like a little dirt road or something. And then maybe the sky is kind of gray. Maybe they're outside. Maybe somebody left their boots outside. Just kind of throwing these colors in here just really quickly. Maybe we'll make it a little darker at the top. This is really messy now, but we'll add some shading and stuff to it. All right, got some layers dry. Now we can work on the background shoe here and work on kind of chiseling out this other one too. I just kind of want it to be really messy. I'm not too concerned about it looking perfect because I don't want it to look perfect. I want it to just kind of look like sketchbook doodle. So we've just got some little random bits. Um, and then I'm going to add a little bit more blue Ooh, I need to tone that down to the puddle here and a little bit more brown just to kind of tone it down a little. I may add some gel pen to denote that this is water. I don't know. This was just like a weird experimental piece and I kind of like it. And then maybe we'll add some little water drops. I don't really care for how these boots are turning out compared to the other ones that I did. But that's okay. <laughs> you can't win them all, am I right? Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this one dry and then I'm going to bring some gel pen into it. Just because I feel like it needs it a little bit. In an attempt to salvage these rain boots and this piece in general, I'm going to add some gel pen. Wow, my gel pen said not today. The heck just came off of my gross. There we go. Why don't you want to work? Basically just going to do like a line straight down these rain boots and hope that helps. It doesn't seem like it's helping. That's okay. Like I have said before, you win some and you lose some, and sometimes it just doesn't turn out the way you want. And sometimes it does. I'm also going to draw some lines denoting that it's raining. Maybe if you can even see them. I think the last thing I'm going to do here right before my camera battery decides to die is just darken up some of the bottom parts here. I feel like they're a little too light for what I was wanting. And I'm also going to add a separation line between these two boots because for some reason I'm having trouble separating them. But yeah, this piece isn't perfect, but it's kind of cute. So we'll just, shh, it's fine. <laughs> so anyway, thank you for joining me in this video. Here's a little recap of some of the stuff we made. If you try anything in your sketchbook, tag me on over on Instagram or Twitter or wherever you post it. I want to see what you made for spring. I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me. I enjoyed hanging out with you. And I hope you have a squidoodly awesome day. And until next time, my adorable squidlings, toodaloo!